Hosea chapter 4. Hear the word of the Lord. That'd be a great message to the Christian. Ye children of Israel. Oh, okay. It's Israel. See how properly you do it? Know who it's talking about. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Uh-oh. God got a problem. You know, we don't have no problems with God. God has a problem with us. Because there is no truth. We're getting like that in America. The media lies to you. The politicians lie to you. The churches lie to you. The schools lie to you. Your employer lies to you. Your employees lie to you. Your co-workers lie to you. Your spouse lies to you. Your children lie to you. The father of all the lies is Satan. You know, and I do it. I don't think I'm Mr. Wonderful. When we stretch that story a little, you know, it was an elastic band. We just stretch it almost to the breaking point. It's still, the, it's still a lie. Nor mercy. You know, I think when we come to the period of the tribulation, the church is gone. From what I read, I don't think there's no mercy at all. But there is the mercy of God. That Jesus said that, that time will be short for the elect's sake. But as far as human beings outside God, outside the Holy Spirit, there's going to be no mercy. No, we, we live, we, you can see the, the hospital where we live. You can actually see the emergency room. There's coming a time that people are going to go to that emergency room. They're actually going to need... Think about it like this. Let's, I was going to give a notion. Let's give a worse illustration. Somebody's been involved in a motor vehicle accident and the car's been all mangled and wrecked. And they need trauma or the, the, the trauma, however you call it. And they are rushed to the emergency room. No, they're not. Because the moment that ambulance shows up, you know, we're, I don't see no mark. Leave them. If there's no mark, there's no trading, there's no business, there's... Leave them. Nor knowledge of God. Now, there'll be all kinds of knowledge. We, we, we know how to make vaccines. We know how to make war. We know how to, you know, kill a baby. We know how to deceive people. We know how to... But we don't know God. And even the churches today, in our period of the Laodicean church age, we don't know God, but we're doing things we think please God. And this is the condition of Israel. So you read the Old Testament to see how they've done wrong. Jeremiah would be a great study for the nation of America today. Because I think the rapture of the church is, I think God gets to the point, hey, just, just bring them home. Get them up here. I don't think it's mercy and grace. All right, come on up. I've been in too many churches. I, I, I can go a whole controversy. Me, I will do it. I don't know, but swearing. Now, this swearing is not cussing. The F-bomb, though, that's going on today. This swearing is, I swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And then you lie your way through it. I will I will take this woman to death through his part and, you, and these Hollywood people have been married 12 or 26 times. I will pay my debt. I will, I will pay my loan. I will pay my mortgage. And you don't. Lying. Well, that goes with no truth. Not only is there no truth, but there's actual lying going out there. You know, when I grew up as a child, there was no thing called recall for automobiles. You built that car, you built it with pride, you know, this and, and, and integrity. I, I just read the other day, and like I said, I read the headline. 
these these oven fryers or, or dry fry, whatever they're called, they're having a major recall because these things catch on fire. <laughs> Nobody checked that out. You see, you know what we do today? We make something and we put it right out in the market, and we have the consequences. We get the lawyers. You know, it'd be more better the lawyer says if we just put it out in the market and pay these little fees than having to redesign the whole product. Killing. I said another thing to a couple weeks ago, but I went in the bookstore with my daughter. And I'm looking around, and on the tables all over this place, there are tons of books on the on the book on the tables to be sold, and on the shelf, a murderer. In their life, their biography, both past and present. How are we as a nation reading about serial killers? They're supposed to be dead by the sword of the government, Romans 13. No, we're, we're selling books, we're making money on them. And I would assume that when they, somebody, I assume they're getting royalties while they're in prison. Stealing. You know, before I was injured enough, I couldn't work the grocery store no more. The grocery store I was working in, if you see someone stop, shoplift, just let it go. It happens so often, and there's just so many precautions. Like, just let them go. When I first started the, the, the retail and the grocery store business, man, man you, you found somebody shoplifting. You made sure you knew that you saw him shoplifting, and then you follow around, kept your eyes on him until the police came, and you better know where that product was, and you better know what that product looked like. And they would bust them. Stealing has become an everyday event. Committing adultery. Well, there's your television and movies. That married man, that married woman are up on the screen with another man, and oh, I love you, and they're, and they're in bed. Okay, they may not be fully naked, but you don't have to be actually having sex to be committing adultery, Jesus said. You just got to be thinking about it. And that's part of your role, that's part of your line. <laughs> Think about all the people in Hollywood will have to stand before, well, you know, we didn't sleep together. Yeah, well, you wanted to. You acted out. And then how many people you taught to do that? You know, stealing has come to be, you just watch television, television will tell you how to do it. We got so many programs today about murder, forensic science and all that. They're teaching you how to do it. They break out. It's a falling out. It's just a big. Think about a, a, a balloon. One of the balloons you, you, put, you put helium, and you just fill it with, with, with sewer, and you just fill it so much that it just explodes. It breaks. And there's filth everywhere. We're, we are at a point today in America that our correctional. <coughs> Excuse me. System. They're not breaking out. They're letting them out. And then, yeah, well, this guy, you know, he, he murdered 40 people. He raped 26 people and he was just let out. Well, then he attacks another person. Uh, these are the same people who tell you, well, I don't know what sex I'm at. What? I think we need to be, we, I think we need to be building loony bins. But Lester Roloff said we are in insane asylum run by the inmates. Yeah, he was right. I mean, he said that in the 70s. Blood touching blood. That's a, that's a murder. Therefore shall the land mourn. And I don't think this is just for the land of Israel. I think this is worldwide. Because there are remote tribes in Africa and Asia and the island nations of the Pacific that, that, you know, if you take a man's life, you die. 
in the in the island nations Pacific, I know a missionary. You know, if a woman's having her cycle that month, there are special huts for her and them. And if it does hold to the truth, if it's worldwide, America has a nation that the land says, we got murderers and they have not died. We got murderers. And by the way, when, when Abel, I couldn't remember who died. When Abel's blood cried out, he wasn't in Palestine. He wasn't in the land of Israel. God says, I hear your brother's blood. Now, Cain couldn't have been put to death because there was no law. But since when Noah came out, not in the land of Israel, on Mount Ararat, God says, any man that kills another man, he says, even the animals will be held accountable. You hear about these, these, these children that have been mauled by these dogs. That dog is going to have to give an account. Go back. I don't know. I can't remember what the chapters are. But you go in there when, when Noah comes out of that ark and he says, hey, any man that kills any man, his blood shall be shed. He says it about the animals, too. If the animals got to be held accountable. So, Hosea, we can look at America, we can look at England like we are in deep doo doo, caca, dung. And what happened to Israel? They went into captivity. What happened to Judah? They went into captivity. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen to America? We're going to be the one nation above all nations. God bless America. We're going to be in there in eternity. No, you're not. There's no America in eternity. There's new Jerusalem, new heavens, and new earth. Therefore the land shall mourn, and everyone that dwells therein shall languish. Why are everything? Why are all? Why are there all these animals attacking? All these sharks attacking? Why are the bumblebees disappearing? Why are the manatees dying? Why are, are these dogs mauling the people? What's all this events with the animals? The sin of man. Why is there a hurricane? Why is there the earthquake? What? Because the sins of man. It's just, it, our sins are just destructing everything. You know what caused the great flood that drowned out the whole world? The violence in the land. It wasn't because, you know, they had soda cans and, and soda wrappers and they had plastic and stuff. They didn't have that stuff. That did not cause the climate change of the world drowning out. Sin. And today, you know, we... we I don't know if it's already passed, whatever, you got this green earth, or mother nature, whatever, the mother earth, so I don't know, some kind of celebration coming up. And I always quote Peter how the earth is going to blow up with fervent heat. Well, you know, we've got to have these climate changes and all that, and Al Gore's out there, and all the milk. Uh, the problem is sin. And you want to do right, number one, you take every murderer who has been convicted at least twice in a court of law, if two trials have said that man is guilty, you got to put him to death. You can't have people running around saying, well, I don't know what sex I am. That's not natural. You can't have taught in your school's evolution. That's not natural. That's not right. That's a lie. We just learned about that. You can't have television teaching people how to commit adultery. You can't have these crypt. They go to jail and they learn how to commit more crime. In Connecticut, before we moved down to Florida, there was a woman accused of bank robbing. And she went out and she, she bank robbed and bank robbed and bank robbed and bank robbed. And accidentally she was caught. And they finally, somebody went and asked and said, how did you get away with it? I mean, there was a tremendous amount of bank robbing. She said, well, I was in jail before and I just talked to the fellow prisoners. And we... we, we Compared notes. And then you turn around and call that a correctional. I had a guy, when I was, I was in jail ministry, I had a guy come out. He said, listen, I'm going home. And, you know, we said the goodbyes. And I said, listen, don't you go back to your old people. Don't you go back to your old clan. You go to a new, new place. You find your church. You get right. And you stay right. I said, I don't care if, you, if your mother is illegal and all that. You stay away from her. Don't go back to where you were. I went to Bible study next week. Gary is sitting there. I said, what? What, your, your paper got screwed up? He goes, no, I was out. I got arrested again. 
That's not correction. The beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea, shall also be taken away. That's your food. Beast, oxen, steak, hamburger, hot dog. Well, they couldn't have hot dog. Well, they could have beef hot dog. Fowls, turkey, chicken, duck. I'm trying to think of other fowls there are. <coughs> There would be no KFC. Fishes. Well, there's all kinds of fish to eat. Well, let me ask you a question, America. Let me ask you a question, Christian. How are the shelves in your grocery store lately? I'll tell you right now, the, the one right here, all the ones in Daytona Beach, they're, they're quite empty. I was talking to uh, the woman who was helping me with my dis my disability and all that. And I said, you know what? I said, I, I, okay, we're talking about, I used to be in the grocery store business. And I can't do it now with my feet. I said, you know, I wish I could work in a grocery store today. And she goes, why is that? I said, I said, when we had to work in a grocery store, we had to face everything on the shelves. And she said, for certain disability people, she can get that job for one in the store. And their job is to face the shelves, make it look pretty. I said, I wish I could have that job today because there's nothing on the shelves to face. I remember there was a time there was this, I mean, all kinds of spaghetti. When every time I did that, I was assigned to that, I'd be like, man, all kinds of flavors, all kinds of things. I was like, and today you, you're lucky if you see more than two brands. Thank God that my brand that I like is on the shelf. Not many of its flavors. Our food is going. Why? Look at Israel. Yet let no man strive, fight, argue, give up, nor reprove another. That's causing fault to somebody else. Now, there's a reproving in the book of Proverbs. If I want to help, you know, if I see a Christian in sin, James, last chapter of James, if I went to him with the Bible and said, you know, what you doing? That's, you know, that's not healthy either. Outside of the Bible, that's just, and be like, and if he listens, well, glory to God. But this is, this is a bunch of women sitting at the table on the TV show just talking crap. And get paid for it. This is a guy that gets up, and, and, and our next, uh, our next guest will come up, and we'll talk about. And this is Christians in my church. Well, you know, I, I had a Christian today. Well, I'm just going to shoot the Democrats. They're just so rotten. And I like, you know, me. I, I said, well, and the Republicans are just as better. Well, I said, you know, Donald Trump is, is very prideful. He's been married, I think, three times. And he's, he's bankrupt his businesses four. He did. Yeah! Well, I didn't know that. And you see, we, 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 we get after each other. You go to work. Not my job. Your job. You're not so good. You think you're so good. I'm better than you, and I don't do nothing. And I get paid. For thy people, the Jews, <clears throat> are as they that strive with the priests. Ho, ho. They walk up to God's Levite and, say, <laughs> and whatever. They're fighting with the priests. There are people that do that in the church. He said, well, sorry, would listen, I go up with the Bible. I do what is right. I'm not, I'm trying to correct. I'm trying to reprove. I don't think I should bring that animal for the sacrifice. Well, listen, it says right here in Leviticus. Let me get the scroll. 
Well, I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to do it my way. I heard pastors say that. I don't care what I don't care what your history. You got too much history. I enjoy. It. I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's Catholic. I don't care. I like it. Oh. Now that's not striving. What's striving? I'm not talking about tithe. I'm talking giving an offering to God. Well, you know, I, I got bills to pay. I got other. I give God the leftover. You shouldn't do that. It's not right. You ought to give cheerfully out of your heart. Well, okay, well, strive. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day. You know, there's one thing that's prevalent in this day and age of society, and it happens to Christians, they fall down. I know a Christian brother right now. He fell. He was, I think it was all weekend. They said he was down on the ground. Until the, the, the home health care came over and found him on the ground. That was another one a long time ago. A, a Christian. He, he had fallen. He was on the ground. And it was there for a while. And he had to go back to the hospital. He, and they had to, you know, he was dehydrated. He messed up his blood. This is happening to Christians. Businesses are falling today. They're closing. And the prophet also shall fall within the, within the night. Your churches are closed because of COVID, and they're not going to open up, many of them. Some are. And I will destroy thy mother. That mother it could, could be a reference to Judah. Because Israel came out of Judah. They split. And when you get the whole of a, and I forget the other one. Huh? said they were sisters. That was Jerusalem and, and, and Samaria. My people. Now I can spiritualize this because we are God's people. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. But my people are destroyed. For a lack of knowledge. For they have rejected knowledge. Now what is that knowledge? We go back to verse number. One. The knowledge of God. What's the Bible say? Well which one. Which Bible do you got? Which version you got? That's important. Because one Bible will say something, and you open the next Bible, well, that's missing. And you open the next Bible, well, that word's not the same as that one. And then you open the next Bible, what on earth are you talking about there? And you open the next Bible, and you got brackets, and you open the next Bible, you know, letter A, go down to the bottom of the page, letter A. Well, this is not the best manuscripts. And then you get the pastor, the preacher up there, you know, better rendering. In the Greek. Yes, Stiley? Uh, we're, in the, we're in the Old Testament. You mean in the Hebrew. What would you say that for? We just did today the study on the... Dead Dead Sea Scrolls. It's in the Greek. It's Old Testament. They didn't do Greek in the Old Testament. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know about Esther. What about, this, what about the destruction? Of, Facebook will tell you, and this has happened to me all the season of Easter, that Ishtar is not Easter. The fact finders, or whatever they call them, on Facebook, and then they give me some religion. The religious person of that church, I forget which church I, I, I tell you, they claim, you know, that's false. Because they're trying to defend their God, Esther. So I put up the other day, I said something like, a pear is from an apple tree that comes from a, a, a grapevine. And I said, this is a fact finder, whatever it's called, test. And at no time did the fact finder say that information was false. 
Uh huh. You see, the fact part is only when you kick them in the butt, when you kick them in the shin. If you don't, if you don't disturb them, okay, let it go through. That's why I don't believe half the crap, and that's a good word. I read the headline. You know, Russia's doing this. I'm like, I don't. You see these pictures? These pictures can be doctored. I'll let missionaries tell me. There is no knowledge of God in the churches. There is no knowledge of the holy. That's Proverbs 31. I think it was Agar. Why? Because God is dumb? No, because they rejected not. God said, hey, Stiley, yes. Go out in the streets and preach Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I'll do it, Lord. And you get the Christians come up to you. He has not need to be done. That's not going to work. I let my light shine. You're offending the people. Though I don't do nothing. You're offending the people. They don't want to hear it. And I'm not talking about just the unsaved people. I'm talking about the Christians. If you were a proper Christian with the Lord, you say, you go, hey, how do you do what you're doing? Is there anything I, I don't want to preach, but is there anything I can do to tell people about Jesus? I, God, will also reject thee. You're going to get what you give God. You reject God, God will reject you. And if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, all go to heaven. No, they don't. If God allowed everybody to heaven, I'd be the first one to walk up to God. Get me out of here. Because I don't want them in heaven. And there's going to be plenty of pastors and Sunday school teachers and Christians. They're going to be in heaven. And they're going to be bald-headed when it comes time to cast those crowns. If we cast them at Jesus. Because I don't even read the elders doing it. That's what the Bible says. But if we do, it comes time to cast those crowns before Jesus. And you ain't got no crowns to pass out. Well, you ain't going to get crowns just because you played the game. Or didn't play the game. You got to earn them. And when you have rejected the word of God, well, where's my crown? Hey, you don't get one. I was in church twice a year. You know what I realized the other day? In the last scene in church age, not many, even your good pastors, in the last scene, not, not many are not going to get the rewards they're expecting. <clears throat> you know, there have been great men in church history who are pastors of churches. I'm thinking, I can't think of his name, but the one that took care of the, the orphans. And he'd be sitting down at the table with the orphans and there's no food. He would pray for food and God would send him food. That day, the bread truck would break. You know, people like that. There's a church that you can go, I forget the names, I forget the place. But there's a church you can go visit of a famous preacher. I forget who it is. And they will take you down this corridor. And they'll take you in this room. And there's a bench. In front of those benches, is, is the floor has been worn away. They'll show you the bedroom of a preacher, and that floor is, there's a hole in the floor. You say, what is that? Those men prayed for four to five hours before they got out and started their day. Friend, I don't do that. Preachers don't do that. Pastors don't do that. Those preachers that prayed four to five hours before they started their day, they're going to get a reward. If you reject God, God's going to reject you. The world wants to think, oh, I can do it, and God's going to love me. You know, the preach, the teacher said, God loves her. No, he don't. Shut up. Was it, For God so loved the world. He loved his past tense, buddy. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Well, I guess there's a problem with the Levites. There's a problem with the Baptist churches. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Seeing thou hast forgotten the word of God. 
Well, I'll get the Word of God. I got an ASV. I need the Word of God. You, I get this picture that Europe and heaven, I think, I, you don't have to believe this. I believe we're going to be raptured with our Bible, but that's personal. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. I, I believe you're going to be some, some you're going, the preacher's going to go up there. Well, look at the word of God. He shows them ASV. God takes that, flings it right up. And you know, you ever take a rock and skim across the water? You're going to see that ASV skim across the, the lake of fire. <laughs> the plop. And then I'll go even further. Stiley? Yes, Lord. Come. You want to give this man a King James Bible? Yes, sir. Here's the King James Bible. Here's the Word of God, you fool. I know a couple of preachers I've been under. Hey, you're not going to like me coming up and give you a King James Bible. I tried to tell you. I tried to tell the church. So look who's forgotten God. Look who's rejected God. Look who's rejected the knowledge of God. The priests, the, the, the men, the holy men of God. That's today. They're called scholars, PhD, doctors. God says you're a fool. I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, the children, you had, you had plenty of babies. So they sinned against me. All your children. Alright? How successful is your pastor? Alright, let me ask you a question. How successful are his children serving the Lord? I know one pastor. Well, my child, everybody's been against me. Everybody's been hard against me. So my son doesn't serve the Lord because he's bitter against how people treated us. And you get up there and preach your messages like, you know, people are all, and what, your own family. Deal with your own children first. And, and Paul says to Timothy, listen, if you can't take care of your children at home, how are you going to take care of God's people? There are some pastors out there, oh, they got children. You don't hear nothing about them because if you were found out about them, whoa. Take J Bob Jones Sr., well, Bob Jones Jr., he's going to take over. And it, the, 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 listen, Bob Jones University was not King James. It was messed up when his son took over. It got messier upper. And then Bob Jones III took over. It got even messier, messier upper. Eli didn't take care of his boys, and it got even more messy up her. There's some men in, in the ministry, and I, say, I look at their children like, okay. And then, you know, they make excuses. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. Well, what's that? Look how good I am. Look at my dad. He, he's, he's the pastor. And I was here. My dad is a pastor of such and such church. My dad founded such and such a church. My great grandpa such and such a church, church, church. And then, what about you? Dud. You know how I know this? You know who Alice Cooper is? He's, he's a rock star. He's a rock star. With hard rock rock star when I grew up. Acid rock and all that. Now, if you know Alice Cooper, right? you know who I'm talking about. His dad was a pastor. His grandpa was. He will tell you my dad was a pastor and my grandpa was a pastor. But what happened to you, buddy? Yeah, yeah, okay. Children fail and all that, but, you know, they get help from the parents. The Bible says train up a child in the way that he should be when he's grown. I'm not quoting completely. You as a parent had help on what that child is doing. They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on iniquity. We used to have, they don't have it now, you get on, but when we used to go grocery shopping, you go there and you would have all these newspapers at the checkout. 
you know, this actress is doing this with this actor, this actor's doing, and look look what this thing, and, and the aliens came down, and Elvis visited them, and, and there's all these other stuff. People are so interested. That's what these talk shows are, and this is what this reality TV is. What are they doing? And how are they doing it? And who are they doing? And then they themselves, they may even say, well, you know, they can get away with that sin. I can too. That's the worst thing for somebody to be looking at somebody sinning, especially a Christian. Well, I can do that too. No, you better not. And there shall be like people, <clears throat> like priests. They're all doing the same thing. And Facebook like. I will punish them for their ways. And reward them their doing. That, that's not a good reward. You say, what's that? Go messing around with, as a man, women you shouldn't be messing around with. And the doctor said, hey, you got a sexually transmitted disease. Here's your reward. Treat your wife wrong. And then you come home and you find a note in the refrigerator. Bye. See ya. Anything you got to say, talk to my lawyer. Kids are kids are with me. Oh, I, I can handle my whiskey. And then you get behind the wheel of a car and you wreck your car in your life. I can eat sugar food. I can, and you start getting amputation. You keep rejecting God, keep rejecting God, and one day you're going to need God. God's like, I ain't listening. You didn't listen to me. I went to church twice a year. I'm a, I'm a pastor with an RSV. <laughs> Expecting to answer you with my words. You know, you have my words. Whoredom. Oh, there's that word again. Remember, that's a sexual and a religious word. We went through that the other night. And wine. And new wine. All right, so wine intoxicating and new wine is grape juice. Look at the alcohol. Take away the heart. They have air through idolatry. They have aired through prostitution. They have aired through alcohol. And they air through grape juice. I'll let the whiskey take care of my life and my feelings. Yeah. Until you wake up in the morning. And <laughs> my people, the Jews, ask counsel. Okay, that sounds good. Hey, God, what can I do? Since this medical edition, I'm getting a new doc. I'm like, Lord, what can I do? Somebody want somebody wants to work with we, with the ministry right now. It's like, Lord, what can I do? And right now, I think the Lord's saying to me, "You go see that doctor, and I'll I'll answer you then." But my people ask counsel. <clears throat> excuse me, at their stocks. What's their stock? That's that little wooden gun. That's their totem pole. That's their weather stick. Today that would be, oh, GEC. How much money are you going to make me today? RAC. Oh, look, ooh, wow, you're going up. Oh, you're going up. Oh, Mr. Company, do I buy or sell this? That stock is a wooden idol of a tree. And they're saying, oh, Mr. Tree, help me forget about God. Their staff, that's what they're walking with. That's their cane. Declareth unto them. You say, that, what, what is that stuff? Okay, that's your cane. You ever seen canes with, with figurines on top of them? A bull, a man's face, a woman. You ever seen that? Listen, they didn't make that cane to look like that. Just 
That's an image and an idol. For the spirit of boredom. Ooh. That's not the Holy Spirit. There is this underlying power of a ghostly of prostitution, of idolatry. Listen, if you've never been in a Catholic church after you got saved, you walk in there and you can... Yeah. All these... Uh, uh, I won't go to a... To a Catholic funeral, I won't go to a Catholic wedding or anything like that. I don't want to go in that building. Has caused men to err. Remember, that's sexual whoredoms and that's religious whoredoms. You can have a whoredom over your pastor and not have a relation with you. My pastor, he's just the greatest. Shh. When my pastor speaks, even God listens. <laughs> hey, the Holy Spirit in that church. And they have gone a whoring from under their God. God's in heaven. They're down there and, and right in front of God's eyes and everything. They're there running around. You remember that, remember that man in, in Numbers? He, he's got this woman and he runs off and, and I think he's Eliezer, Aaron's son, chases them with a, with a javelin right to their bellies. All right. Remove Eliezer from the picture and that's what's going on in the eyes of God. If you hold the eyes of God, you're holding the evil and the good. You're not hiding from God. It's all open. I think the worst deception you can get going on today, and probably in the future, I mean in the past, is you are in these churches and they think you're doing right. They, they believe God and proves, and friend, you are so far. You say, well, how far are we? You are standing on the pitcher's mound of a ball game. There's the batter, and you throw a football. And he grabs the football and bounces it and throws it in a hoop. While you're skating on ice. <laughs> they sacrifice, okay, upon the mountains, the tops of the mountains, because we reach high to God. The highest point that we can get to God. We get to God on our own. That's what they tried to do at Babel with that tower. That's what they tried to do with NASA. Look, we're on Mars. Endeavor on Mars. We got the Hubble Space Telescope. We're reaching out far, but you're not going to know the knowledge of God. You can take all the pretty pictures, and they are pretty pictures, but you're not going to get a picture. Of, you know, they're waiting for the one day to get that smiling guy. Hi. They burn incense upon the hills. You ever see pictures of Catholic churches? They're always like on a mound. Under oaks and poplars and elms. Those are trees. Because the shadow thereof is good. The darkness. The brownness. Shadow is not light. And those shadows were, ooh, that looks like a... Therefore, your daughters shall commit whoredom. So, religious whoredom brings forth religious whoredom. This is why in, in Exodus 20, as far as idolatry, God says in third and fourth generation, remember that? That's because great grandma has taught her, her grandma, which taught her daughter, which has taught you the Roman Catholic ways. The fathers went out, got the wood, the children chopped the wood, and the women made the cakes the queen of heaven. And taught their daughters how to do it too. You got to teach your children to be a Catholic. How do you know? 
I was a Catholic. Now, Sally, you go over there, open up that open up that door to that room. You kneel down. Uh, uh, they're going to hear a sliding. A priest is going to say, "What I do? You tell them what you've done wrong this week." Sally, you go up. You act holy and pious, but they don't say it like that. And when, when the priest comes up and, and puts that little open your mouth, he's going to put it on your tongue. And you just go settle down to that dissolve. And when you want to pray for an aunt and uncle, you go up to the candles. You put your quarter in. I don't know how much it costs today. And you light a candle for them. Now, Stolly the brat that he was, he'd go up there blow all the candles out. So I don't know how many people I put in the hell. I thought it was funny. Now, you put your hands. In, you know, God has protected me. Many times the devil wanted me dead. You know, you put your hands in this holy water. I used to drink the holy water. Not thinking about all the hands that went in there. Okay? You got to teach your child to do wrong. Did we just saw that about their children? They're, no, they're, okay, your child may have gone wild and crazy on their own, but most of them get help from their parents. You know why I smoke? When I told, when I said I wasn't going to smoke and drink, One day, my mom and I were driving around at 3 o'clock in the morning. My dad had come home drunk. Mom told me, she says, Dolly, says, I hope you never drink. I said, Mom, I said, maybe just a little bit. And I got I got my, her wrist right in my face, and thank God she put it in my face. Slapped me. That wasn't child abuse. That was child rearing. Thank you, Mom. But you know why I grew up and smoked? You know why I grew up and drank? Daddy taught me. I remember those times, the family outings at, at the boatyard. Daddy gave me that little bit of Budweiser at the end of the air, son. You want some beer? Yeah, I never, thank you, Dad. Well, you know, those people in the church, they're, 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 they think they're holy. They think they're great. They're, you know, that guy over there, he's, you know, yeah, you're teaching your children. It may not be a cigarette. It may not be alcohol, but you're teaching them something. I work. I, I, I'm not feeling good today. I'm sick. I'm <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Okay. Uh, all right. Fine. All right. Where's the tickets to the ball game? And they wonder how you treat your spouse in front of your children. How you even treat your children. Your spouse is which. They commit adultery. You got hoarders and adultery. Now remember that adultery can be physical sexual activity, which it is. We'll see that in a moment. But it's also religious adul uh, adultery. Religious. For themselves are separated with whores. The adulterers say, well, I'm not going to hang out with her. She's a whore. I'm an adulteress. What? <laughs> All have sinned. Well, you know, that's a big, nasty, wicked sin you've done there. My sin. Well, my sin ain't as bad. How you doing, preacher, with your children? And they sacrifice with harlots. They go to the same church. They go to the same worship service. I can imagine all the sinners that went last Sunday to sunrise service, Daytona Beach, Florida. They say there were hundreds. There are Catholics, Presbyterian, Baptists, undenominational. Oh, oh, mixed bag of sinners that don't know God and don't even know why they're doing what they're doing. And you brought your children. You got a church where people only come twice a year and you celebrate, oh, they only come twice a year. And then you wonder why your child won't come to church. Well, hey, I'll just come twice a year, Dad. Those are your favorite people. Because I see how you teach Joseph. Joseph comes every week unless he's really sick and you don't care about him. You speak ill. I'll see you twice a week, Dad. Maybe that. Therefore, the people 
that does not understand, that goes with the no knowledge, shall fall. For the Christian, that fall is, when you enter the judgment seat of Christ, there's ashes and nothing else. Maybe tears. Some of them, I don't think they'll have tears. No, you want to be that way, Jesus. That guy was a fruitcake. You gave him crowns. I gave my money, put it in the plate, and then I did the 1040. I don't know when the attitude ends at the judgment. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah be offended. Uh-oh, that's down south. And come not unto Gilgal, neither go up to Beth Haven, nor swear the Lord liveth. Don't go around, oh, I love Jesus, and you're going to sin. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Got another beer. It's made, you know, I'm watching this park, the, the parking wars, you know, people with meters and all that. It's amazing how people come up, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up. And then they get in that van and then they mock Jesus because of what you claim about Jesus. I don't know how such a Christian has such anger. Yeah, I wish they. Uh, I wish they'd shut up too. Oh man! Hmm. Israel slides back as a backsliding heifer. Uh, here's the, the, here's this cow is going up a hill. No, it's not going up a hill. It's going down the hill backwards. That's not right. And there are Christians, oh, I'm heading to Jesus, glory and honor, and you're going backwards. And for many Christians, they're going to go backwards and end up in hell because they're not Christians. That's the worst kind. <clears throat> now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. It would be the millennium. You're still God's people. You're still a Christian. But man, you got a messed up life. All right, next one. Now, now here we go. This starts. If, if you want to remember, remember Hosea, if you're going to deal with a Mormon. Mormons believe they are of Ephraim. Ready? Ephraim's joined to idols. Let him alone. All right, you're going to work from the LDS. LSD? No. No, we're from LDS. We're the Latter-day Saints. Wait a Hosea, Hosea. Hosea 417, if you're from Ephraim, you're from Ephraim. Yeah, we're from Ephraim. All right, you guys are joined the house. Get out of here. And don't we wish them a good morning, good afternoon, well do. You know, I saw a good thing a Christian put on, on Facebook, and I didn't realize it. I don't tell, unless accidentally, I don't tell Jehovah Witnesses have a good day and all. It says it in the Bible, Second John. This Christian, Went so far as say, don't you say that to a Catholic, don't you say that to anybody. Whoa. I know churches tell you to pray for every church you pass. Kind of something unscriptural there. Ephraim is joined that now Ephraim is the child of, of Joseph, one of the children. Ephraim is a bad boy during Hosea. Ephraim's up north. I believe Joshua was from Ephraim. Come a long way backward. They're, you know what Ephraim right now, with this start, they're known for idolatry. That's not good. From Genesis to Hosea, I don't hope you don't say that idolatry is good, but a church does. <laughs> Baptists do. They just had a whole bunch of dyed colored eggs. Come on, now reality. Why would you color eggs? Then my question is, can you eat them? If you can't eat them, then you just waste it. Yeah, I don't know if you can eat I hate eggs. Yeah. Their drink is sour. 
You, you've had that sour. They have committed whoredoms, whoredoms continually. This is Ephraim. Right along with Israel. Her rulers with shame do love give me. That's America. Love, 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 love. Wait a minute, let me get my camera out while I give this homeless person a five dollar bill. See, click, smile, I'm gonna take a picture, take a click. I'm gonna give money to this charity. All right, what line of 1040 do I fill that out on? Oh, I got to do the long form? Oh, okay. Now, you know, I mean, you know, I'm a street preacher. You know, people go, why don't you feed the homeless? Well, because my job is preaching the gospel. Why don't you feed the homeless? You can tell, you know, they can tell me what to do, but I can't tell them what to do back. That's a sin. I told them, you, know, you ought to be out there feeding the homeless. You know, why don't you go over there and preach? Okay, why don't you? I'm right here. I'm here. You can go over there. The wind has bound up her. The wind had bound her up in her wings. I guess you can't fly. They shall be ashamed. Because of their sacrifice. They're, they're unworthy, unproper, sacrificing to gods. One day they're going to stand before God. Well, let's close with what a Christian. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. So what does the Bible say about Easter? What does it say about Lent? What's it say about stocks? What's it say about being a husband? What's it say about Christmas? What's it say about being a child? What's it say about being a preacher? What's it say about a, a church member? What's it say about being an employee? What's it say about spending your money? What's it say about earning your money? And many Christians are going to be ashamed because, you know what? They may carry a Bible. Yay to a King James Bible. But if you don't open and read and study it, you're going to be standing before God. Like, there are going to be some preachers, pastors. They're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to lose because of Easter. They're going to have that bad look in their face. Uh, and God's going to say, you see you see Skyler over there? Yeah. I sent him to you to tell you what to do. Now, how many times did you preach about Nathan and David? Thou art the man. And you didn't do what David did. You didn't repent and get right. Really? And then you wonder why your congregation didn't listen to you. All heads bow, all eyes closed. 